A couple is on their boat in the open sea, and after drinking a lot, the effects of the alcohol caused them to get lost. After some time adrift, they spot a large island in the distance and decide to disembark to try to get help, unaware of what awaits them. The woman decides to go ahead to try and find someone, while her boyfriend stays at the dock tying the boat. Walking through the forest, she finds a very suspicious facility surrounded by fences and barbed wire. Believing it to be some kind of military installation, the girl starts to call for help, but when she doesn't get a response, she decides to go back to the forest and maybe find some shelter in the woods. In the middle of her search, the woman starts to hear strange noises coming from the trees around her, and fearing being caught by some fierce predator, she begins to run extremely terrified. Feeling she is being surrounded, the young woman starts calling for her boyfriend, who, unfortunately for her, is too far away to hear. Realizing her partner wouldn't be able to save her, the girl tries to run again but is easily caught by mysterious creatures that drag her by her legs to their lair. Along the way, the woman tries to grab onto something and maybe escape, but her fingers are devoured by the beast, and unable to resist, she simply gives in. In the distance, her boyfriend finally hears the agonizing cries of his partner, but unfortunately, it's too late and there's nothing he can do to help. Unaware of the dangers that await them, Matt and John, two brothers who have the best of relationships, fly in their plane to that same island, accompanied by their childhood friends named Noah and Sarah, and also Nikki, Matt's girlfriend. It turns out that before becoming deserted, the island had some residents, and among them was the brother's uncle. After many years without visiting the place, the group decides to spend the weekend at the abandoned house to have fun away from civilization. When they arrive, the two brothers go to the garage where the generator is and take the opportunity to see if their uncle's old car is still working and are surprised to find that, after so many years inactive, the vehicle still runs, even needing some repairs. Inside the house, Sarah and Noah are responsible for storing the supplies and preparing a special drink to celebrate the arrival, but since the house has no electricity, they have to wait for the two brothers to turn on the generator before they can use the blender. As soon as Matt and John get the job done, an excited Sarah turns on the blender, but she doesn't even have time to celebrate. A few seconds after managing to turn on the appliance, the power suddenly goes out. Not knowing what happened, the couple of friends decide to check the fuses in the basement, which, due to the lack of electricity, is completely dark. Noah then uses his lighter to illuminate the environment, and while exploring, they find a wine cellar with dozens of wine bottles and decide to take them. After some more time exploring the place, the couple of friends manage to reach the fuse box, find the burnt fuse, and start replacing it with a new one. After reconnecting the power, Sarah makes her drink and everyone starts to get drunk. After some time swimming, the group goes to the house's porch where they watch John practicing target shooting with his bow until a beautiful German shepherd puppy emerges from the forest, making the friends fall in love with so much sweetness. In the middle of the night, as the drink they brought for the trip runs out, Noah goes to the kitchen to get one of the bottles of wine he found in the basement, and when he opens the door, the puppy goes with him. While the man opens the bottle, the once gentle puppy now seems enraged and starts growling at the man. When Noah returns to the living room and starts telling his friends what happened, the puppy runs out of the house through a hole in the structure and heads for the forest. As Sarah really likes the little animal, she decides to go out and look for it with John, who offers to help her. Using some flashlights, the couple of friends manage to find the puppy in the middle of the forest, but as they approach, an adult dog jumps from a bush onto Sarah, knocking her to the ground. When John comes over to help his friend, the enraged animal bites the woman's leg for no apparent reason and then runs into the forest with its puppy. Thinking about the possibility of the animal being contaminated with the rabies virus, Matt and Nikki argue that they should return to the city the next day to start treatment and prevent Sarah from contracting the disease. John says that medical care doesn't need to be immediate, and therefore, they could return after the weekend. However, he leaves the decision in the hands of Sarah, who thought the attack was to protect the puppy and didn't want to interrupt the mini-vacation of her friends. She opts to stay at the house until Monday. During the early morning hours, John gets up to get a glass of water and finds Sarah visibly disturbed at the window. When he tries to speak with her, she doesn't respond and begins to approach him without saying a word, but as soon as she gets close to the man, she starts kissing him so hard that it hurts him. With John's complaints of pain, some trigger is activated in the girl's mind, and she finally regains consciousness, asking him to leave. The next morning, the group of friends is having breakfast, and we can see that Sarah has a voracious and bizarre hunger, almost piercing Noah's hand with her fork when he tries to grab the last pancake. As soon as they finish their meal, John grabs his bow to practice target shooting in the forest, and as they were bored, the other men decide to go with him while Nikki stays to keep Sarah company. 
In the middle of the forest, the men find no signs of other animals, and with nothing else to do, Noah separates from the group and sits on a log to clean his camera. While cleaning the lens, the man begins to hear growling sounds around him. Concerned, he starts to look for the source of the noise and finds himself surrounded on all sides by several dogs. In an attempt to escape alive, the man runs through the forest until he trips over a root and is found by his friends. As soon as Noah tells them about the dogs, the boyfriend of the woman who was previously devoured appears behind them, completely covered in blood, and says that the dogs don't want anyone on the island, but the man doesn't even have time to explain why. While he is speaking, an enormous dog jumps on his chest, knocking him down the hill and devouring him alive along with its pack. The terrified trio runs toward the house, and when they're almost there, they see the girls who were in the water also being chased by the animals. They then run to try to help them, and just as they are about to enter, one of the dogs manages to bite Nikki's leg, grabbing her by the pants. Attempting to save her, John grabs his bow and shoots an arrow at the ferocious dog, but his shot ends up hitting the young woman's calf, causing her immense pain, but still managing to drive the creatures away. Once inside the house, Matt breaks the projectile with pliers and begins to remove it to make a bandage. While preparing the bandages, the man tries to understand what's happening, telling his friends why that place is now a desert. Many years ago, a company rented part of the island to build a kennel that would train some dogs to be guides for the visually impaired, but after a few years, one of the dogs ended up contracting the rabies virus, and as they all frequented the same environment, the sick animal contaminated other dogs who managed to escape from the training center. With dozens of dogs contaminated across the island, the kennel was closed, and the island was completely evacuated, becoming the desert it is today. But since the contamination happened at least a year ago, the dog should have already died. What Matt wonders now is how they're still alive after being infected for so long. After the inconclusive conversation, Noah, completely hysterical, starts shouting that they should seek medical help for the two injured girls, but the man's screams end up attracting one of the dogs, which jumps through the window and knocks him to the ground. As soon as it gets up, the animal charges toward Sarah, and just as it's about to reach her, it's held back by John at the last moment. Seeing that without his help, his brother could also get hurt, Matt grabs a metal bar and thrusts the piece of metal into the animal, and it dies shortly afterward. Realizing that the house isn't safe, the group gathers their belongings, and just as they're about to leave the house, they notice that two of the rabid dogs are at the pier, exactly where the plane they used to get to the island is. Matt then says it's better to wait for the animals to leave, but after a few seconds, Noah looks out the window and sees the aircraft drifting with the tide because the dogs cut the rope that was holding the plane. Seeing no sign of the dogs and knowing they could lose the plane in the middle of the ocean if they take too long to reach it, the group of friends heads to the pier extremely apprehensive. John jumps into the water to swim to the aircraft, but as he approaches, the tide turns the aircraft over, and the man can see that the two dogs that broke the rope were actually hiding on the wing. The animals then jump into the water and start swimming toward John, who desperately needs to return to the pier to avoid being caught. As soon as they are all on solid ground, one of the fierce dogs tries to attack them, but Noah manages to fend it off with his baseball bat. Taking advantage of the moment, they head back home, barely escaping the other animals. Aware of the capabilities of the enraged dogs, the group begins reinforcing the windows and cracks in the house with wooden boards. Once the improvements are completed, Noah tries to call emergency services, but the cell phones have no signal. Matt and John wrap the body of the dog that tried to attack Sarah in a cloth and throw it outside. With things seemingly safe, they decide that the best chance of survival is to head to the other side of the island, where there is a boat. Obviously, that strange man who was attacked on the hill got there somehow, and they presume the vehicle he used is precisely at the dock next to the old kennel. Furthermore, Matt argues that even if there is no way out, they might still find some communication equipment at the facilities. With the plan set, the men decide to go to the garage to try to start the old car once again, but as they step outside, the fierce dogs rush towards the body that the brothers threw out and begin to devour it. Seeing the pack of dogs outside, the trio returns indoors and decides to come up with another plan. Matt plans to reach the garage via a rope connecting the two buildings, but for that, he needs the pulley that was on the zipline outside. The man then takes advantage of the beasts being distracted by their feast and runs to grab the object. Even while trying to be as stealthy as possible, he is spotted by one of the dogs but manages to get back inside safely. Next, we see Matt attaching the pulley to the rope connected to the garage. Even though Nikki is injured, she convinces her boyfriend that, being lighter, she should check the car. 
With everything ready, the girl begins sliding down the rope and reaches the other side, but the insatiable dogs see her dangling like a piece of meat in a butcher shop and run towards her, while her friends try to distract the dogs. As soon as she manages to enter the garage, Nikki gets inside the car and tries to start it, but the vehicle shows no sign of life. Meanwhile, the dogs outside are pushing to get in and manage to make a hole in the gate large enough for them to enter. Nikki then climbs out through the sunroof and has to hang onto the wooden structures of the garage to avoid being devoured. Outside, the group pulls her back, and as the fierce dogs leap to reach her, John shoots an arrow into the heart of one of them, finally rescuing Nikki. During the night, the power suddenly goes out, and believing it's the fuse acting up once again, Noah volunteers to go down to the basement to reconnect the electricity. As soon as he reaches the lower floor, he begins to hear strange noises coming from a compartment where a creepy doll is hanging at the entrance. When Noah approaches the source of the sound, one of the dogs leaps at his neck, tearing pieces from his throat and brutally crushing his trachea and rupturing his jugular. Hearing all the commotion, Matt and John rush to the entrance of the basement but find their friend already dead. They then lock the door to trap the dogs, but it doesn't do much good because, outside, several dogs go into a wild mode and start breaking the wooden reinforcements on the windows, thus gaining access to the house. The group then decides to run to the attic, but as they are nearly there, Matt is seized by one of the demonic dogs that leaps onto his back and begins biting him, but he is saved by John, who manages to restrain the animal. With everyone on the upper floor, the house is now completely taken over by the dogs, and with only the supplies they have in the attic, they need to devise a plan to get out as quickly as possible. When dawn arrives, the group leaves the attic to check if the beasts are still in the house, but apparently, they have all left. So, the brothers head to the garage, and while John is behind the wheel, Matt pushes the car until it finally starts, but with all that noise, the dogs manage to track them and begin a chase. The younger brother then jumps onto the car roof and grabs the bow to try to hit them, but when one of the animals climbs onto the hood of the vehicle, John has to make a sharp turn, and with little support, Matt ends up dropping the bow. With no way to fight off the creatures, the man enters through the sunroof, but at that exact moment, the car stops by itself. Without needing to get out to push, John heads towards a cliff to gain speed and try to restart it. Although it's a rather stupid idea, it ends up working, and they barely escape with their lives. With the car finally running, the brothers head back to the house, but along the way, a bloodthirsty German shepherd jumps through the car window and nearly bites Matt. However, he is saved by John, who swerves the car to the side, causing the mutant creature to crash into a pole. Back at the house, Sarah has given up trying to survive and refuses to flee with them. Trying to convince her to change her mind, John approaches her, but at that moment, one of the dogs appears in the room. Determined to avenge the infection, the girl asks him to escape through the window while she stays to fight the beast. Despite his reluctance, John ends up jumping out. At that moment, the dog jumps at Sarah's neck, but she manages to defend herself by putting her arm in front. Knowing that unarmed, she wouldn't be able to take out the fierce dog, the girl tries to throw it out the window but ends up falling with it onto a wooden stake, thus causing both their deaths. Realizing they couldn't help their friend, who is already lifeless, the trio gets into the car and starts driving to the other side of the island while other hungry dogs appear to devour the impaled bodies. When they reach the other side, the group decides to enter the facility to try to call for help via radio, but during their exploration, they discover it wasn't a kennel for training guide dogs but a laboratory that was genetically modifying the animals to become combat machines. It turns out that the fierce dogs were never infected with rabies, they were modified to such an extent that they became uncontrollable. Realizing they had gone too far, the researchers decided to euthanize the animals, but since they had become extremely intelligent and strong, the mutant dogs managed to escape the facility. Aware of the risk they would face if they decided to stay, the group of scientists simply abandoned the island and left the dogs there. This explains why they are so intelligent and also why there are no other animals on the island, they were all wiped out by the beasts. Regardless, as soon as they reach the radio, Nikki sees through the window that the transmitter tower's cable is disconnected, and John volunteers to reconnect the wires. He then leaves the building, and while climbing, he sees the couple's boat docked. When the man gives the signal, Nikki turns on the amplifiers to increase the radio's range, but when she presses the button, a short circuit occurs, starting a fire in the building's wiring and giving John a massive shock, causing him to fall from the top of the tower. Fortunately, he's alive. However, as the flames spread throughout the place, the dogs finally find them and manage to dig under the fence to attack John, who receives several bites. 
Seeing that his brother needed help, Matt grabs his baseball bat and runs to help him fight off the animals. Inside, Nikki opens a gas cylinder valve and lets the dogs in. When she senses there's enough fluid in the air to cause an explosion, she opens the door, allowing the gas to reach the flames, initiating a combustion that kills all the dogs inside. Outside, Matt and John are surrounded on all sides, and when they think they have no chance of survival, Nikki shows up with the car and runs over the dogs. She survived the explosion by hiding right behind the door. With everyone in the car and knowing the boat's location, the trio drives to the spot and plunges the car into the water while the fierce dogs approach. The group manages to exit the sinking vehicle and safely reaches the dock. After boarding the boat, they escape the island, seeing the animals watching them from afar. The film ends when they are out at sea, where they are unfortunately surprised to find a fierce dog there with them.